you recall, the theory of continental drift was proposed by Alfred Wegener in the early 1900s. In 1915, Wegener published his ideas in a book called The Origin of the Continents and Oceans. Begner thought that the continents we know today had once been part of a larger single supercontinent called Pangaea. Pangaea means, uh, in Greek, means all land, which later broke apart and slowly the continents drifted to their current locations. Wegener used different types of evidence to support his theory, including the shape of the continents seem to fit together like puzzle pieces, matching rock types and mountain beds occur in North America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. Coal beds stretched from the eastern United States across to Europe. Evidence of glaciers is present in regions with warm, dry climates, which indicates that continents at the equator today were once closer to the South Pole. That's called paleoclimate data. Fossils of the same plant or animals are found on continents on opposite sides of the ocean in rocks of identical age and type. Wegener was not the first to notice the puzzle-like fit of the continents. Explorers and mapmakers as early as Magellan had recorded this observation. This is a timeline for the continental drift theory. According to Alfred Wegener, he would have said that uh, when Pangaea existed, it would look like this this many years ago until you end up to our present day locations. Alfred Wegener's continental drift theory was not accepted by many scientists. It did not explain how the continents were able to move, only that they had done so. During World War II, Harry Hess of the U.S. Navy used sonar to map larger to the map large underwater mountains while looking for German submarines. He found that there were underwater mountains where magma was bubbling up from beneath the seafloor. He concluded that as this new earth formed, the old fourth the old earth must disappear, because if it did not, the earth would continue to grow. He theorized that the new lithosphere pushed the old lithosphere out of the way, and this motion provided an explanation for how the tectonic plates moved. This finally pro provided evidence for Wegener's theory of continental drift. Hess published his findings in 1962 in History of Ocean Basins. A colleague of Hess's at the U.S. Coast Guard um, his name was Robert Dietz, independently published another paper supporting the same theory in 1961, although Hess is credited with originating the idea. Seafloor spreading is the process by which new seafloor is formed. It takes place at mid-ocean ridges, submerged mountain ranges under the ocean. As it occurs, the tectonic plates move apart and magma rises from below the surface to fill in the gaps. As the magma solidifies, the new ocean floor is formed and the older crust gets pushed away from the mid-ocean ridge. Subduction is the process in which the old seafloor, way over here, uh, gets pushed down beneath the surface, remelts, and is recycled into the new crust. So here's where new seafloor is created at a mid-ocean ridge. And this is where old seafloor is recycled at a subduction zone. Contemporary, that means current, proof of seafloor spreading. Number one, magnetic reversals. The molten magma that arises in the mid-ocean ridges contains tiny grains of magnetic material. As the Earth's polarity reverses throughout history, a record of these changes is captured in the rock. The result looks like a barcode. GPS and GIS. The most modern way of looking at plate tectonics is using GPS, Global Positioning System, and GIS, Geographic Information Systems. The result from these long-term studies shows that the rates of plate movement have been calculated with great accuracy. The GPS data can be analyzed with maps in the GIS to achieve very accurate measurements. Here is a picture of uh, the seafloor as done by different colors to indicate the age. Where you see red on the ocean floor, this is where the ocean floor is the youngest. As you can see, age of ocean here, red is the youngest. By the time you get down to blue, purple, and pink, we are talking about older ocean. You'll notice when you look at this picture that right here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, we have very young seafloor.
And as you go out in both directions, the seafloor gets older and older. Again, that supports seafloor spreading. Over here, you can see that this mid-ocean ridge is spreading very fast. You can tell that because there's so much, so much new seafloor. The theory of plate tectonics. Historical data and observations such as fossil distribution, continental drift, and seafloor spreading contributed to the theory of plate tectonics. This theory explains how the rigid tectonic plates move with the molten rock and magma beneath them in the upper mantle. Tectonic plate movement takes place in certain regions called plate boundaries. Each boundary results in a specific motion and causes events such as earthquakes or volcanic activities or features such as mountains or trenches that indicate the type of boundary. Tectonic plates move on top of the asthenosphere very slowly. Convection currents within the mantle cause this movement. A boundary is the place where tectonic plates touch. They are regions of intense geologic activity. The three boundaries types are transform boundaries, where two plates slide past each other horizontally, divergent boundaries where two plates move away from one another, or convergent boundaries where plates move toward each other. At convergent boundaries, there's three types of convergent boundaries. One, ocean can collide with a continent, or otherwise caused ocean land collision, where one continental plate and one oceanic plate push together push against each other. This produces a deep ocean trench offshore and mountain range onshore, volcanic arcs and earthquakes. Ocean to ocean collision, where two oceanic plates push against each other. This produces deep ocean trenches, island arcs and undersea volcanoes. And finally, continent to continent collision, land to land, where two continental plates push against each other. This produces very tall mountain ranges on land. Earthquakes happen when plates move with respect to each other because with friction and stress at the edge of plates prevents them from slipping smoothly at their boundaries. This causes sudden ground movement caused by the release of energy stored in the rocks. All types of plate boundaries have earthquakes, but earthquakes at transform boundaries are enormous because of the boundaries are usually shallow and close to the Earth's surface. Tsunamis happen at convergent boundaries or subduction zones when one plate is forced to dive beneath another plate. It causes vertical motion which forces water up. The quake occurred deep beneath the Indian Ocean at the juncture of two of the Earth's tectonic plates. The Indian plate had been moving toward the coastal plate for centuries at a rate of two and a half inches per year but instead of sliding under, it became stuck. In a matter of seconds, 700 miles of coastal plate shot forward a distance of up to 60 feet. Hot spots, hot springs, and geysers indicate stationary areas of hot magma beneath the Earth's crust. As the tectonic plates pass over these molten areas, they experience seismic and volcanic activity, even though they are not near plate boundaries. Stationary hot spots tracks can be used to trace tectonic plate motion history. Example, the Hawaiian Islands. So remember the Pacific plate moves over the stationary hotspot, and these over here end up being old islands that got moved off this hotspot.